All right, everyone. Uh, welcome back to uh, the Trader Investor. This is uh, one of those uh, Tuesdays where we analyze the market uh, condition, our outlook, our expectation, where we think opportunities lie ahead. So this is uh, an important part of uh, the week for me, like uh, really getting down into uh, d the direction for the rest of the week, right? And uh, like. You can do it on a Sunday, prepare for the week starting Monday morning. You can do it Monday or Tuesday. I like to do it before Wednesday, right? And so Tuesday to Tuesday, it's good enough. We've never talked about that. So I just want to uh, give a little explanation. Uh, there's, there are usually a lot of activities on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Uh, so I just want to prepare for those activities. Activities meaning like some sort of a big uh, market moving events like Powell might speak, or we might have a non-farm payroll, we might have CPI report. So all of this, those things come into the picture. So we want to get ahead of it and, and prepare and, and look at, are there any technical headwinds? Even if we get the positive data, could it stop uh, moving in the direction we want it to go? Or are we at a headwind and we get a negative uh, report? Are we going to collapse right all of those things come into the picture as we analyze uh, the market so so this week uh, we have a, a little bit of a catching up to do a couple of weeks ago uh, when uh, we were looking at the market uh, it was a couple of down days right that tuesday was followed by you know a down friday a, uh, and no trading on monday uh, and and then that uh, tuesday was a down day and then uh so we said what are some of the things that could happen and from a retracement perspective right i like to leave all of this until we have the session and then we move our fibonacci retracements to the right place if it warrants a move so from that uh fib retracement perspective we said it is possible that it only uh, has a very shallow pullback to that 23.6 because that's what it has been given us. Uh, I didn't mean to move the whole chart. I wanted to move the fib. So if we can see all the way this move, we're not seeing anything anything deeper, right? The, the deepest here didn't even come to 23.6, right? So we kept marching. We kept marching along and so when we had our conversation, we said, hey, one possibility, it stops at that 23.6. It's a shallow pullback. Our sweet spot, as we always say, green to green, green to green, 38.2 to 61.8. This is, this is my sweet spot. Like this is where if I, when I take a position in here, I am very comfortable taking a full position. When I take a position up here, I'm not taking a full position. When I take a position down here, I'm definitely not taking a full position. I'm not even taking half position. Like uh, there's a lot of things I uh, that are heavy on the market that make me believe uh, maybe not. So I'm more cautious, extremely cautious there. Up here, I'm not that cautious, but uh, I don't take full position because it's not a sweet spot, and I don't know if I'm gonna get lower highs. Right? When you look at lower highs, this is what I mean. This is downward uh, angle, right? This uh, uh, line here. So we're having lower highs, but we touched the 23.6 and this one zigzag that if we touch 23.6, we go up in this zone, uh, we have a pullback, it's off to the, to the races, keeping in mind lower high. Right, keeping in mind. So these lines we drew them beforehand, right? So now that we have the actual move, this you can say it's here or you can say it's here. Either way, that's the move. Right? That's this is the actual move. Uh and from here we're just again racing. So we will adjust our fib retracements, but uh, real quick before we adjust that. I said you you if you could have said this is the pullback and I'm entering so you get this 
like almost like a hammer here and you can take it or you can say well uh i d this i don't like this hammer but this is a good rejection so i started to go down good rejection and when you break this high when you break this high this is where i enter either way it's just it that's a personality thing where you feel comfortable taking a trade i like to take trades as early as possible uh, if i see something that i like so, but what's important, extremely important, is if you take this trade, never, never give too tight of a stop, right? It has to be some logical. So the previous pullback is here. So we can say, uh, you know, this is where I like to ha send my exit, or you can take it all the way down to that 23.6, that area where it bounced off either way. Uh, it's a it's a good signal, and then your uh, your two to one ratio is gonna take time to come. Right, it's gonna take time to come if you have it a little too wide. Uh, in this instance, I don't like to have it this wide. Why? I mean, I like to give some room, but not this wide because you know this uh, twenty three point six is not my sweet spot. Right, so I don't want to be wrong because this is a lower high. When I see this lower high, it has struggled. Yes, it didn't give me a new low. So this from here to here, it did not make lower low. Therefore, I'm comfortable entering this uh, trade. Right? I'm comfortable, but you know, smaller size and maybe a little bit less of a risk. Now, when you do that, your two is here right very easy to get that too but you could say but 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 i took an exit here took an exit here because i made a double top and i saw the price go down so i didn't actually exit at the top here but i exited somewhere here so if you say that this right here right this trade this is your position right you 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 made some money so it's not a loss but you say okay i take half my position here that's okay right ne never an objection if you do something like that but if you say i'm going to stick to my guns because uh, again this is a, a very shallow pullback higher low right continuously higher low especially Especially, let's just get this uh, out of the way. Especially when you see, I just want to get the writing out of the way. When you see here, we form this gap, but we immediately close this gap. You can say, I'm comfortable. I'm not going to uh, take full exit here, right? Partial exit. Uh, but if you say, I'm taking this, as soon as I get here, I'm exiting. That's fine. It's... Uh, there's nothing wrong with making money only something wrong when you try to become a pig right so uh let's not be greedy but this one if you take an exit there no problem but like i said our uh good exit our 2x came here uh came somewhere yeah yeah came right there that's where we got our 2x that's a beautiful move and then we have a runner going so keep, keep that in mind right not too tight of a stop because this would have stopped you out right if if your stop was in this road again if you enter here and your stop is right below this hammer you are stopped out why because your stop was too tight right you you would get your 2x <laughs> you get your 2x and an exit i mean you got lucky but i say that's not that's just not a, a good trade i think that's it's very rare where uh you have a scenario where you can get stopped out and you would have made your 2x i mean of course you make your 2x but like do you want to make a dollar or do you want to make ten dollars? I think you've got to make that decision as well. 
So it's just like we expected. Uh, shallow pullback, uh, higher low, even though it's lower high, higher low. And we took the trade, and boom, here we are. And uh, the other scenario was shallow pullback. We close this gap and go down, but that didn't happen, right? This this guy didn't happen. Uh, and our sweet spot didn't happen. So here we are. We had three different scenarios. One presented itself. Right? If we only have one scenario, we, we'll miss it. Right? If we only had this one, we don't miss it, but we don't know which one is right. So uh, we don't do that. So we have a gap here. Let's keep that in mind. So this gap was closed. This uh, supply zone is gone. Uh, I want to draw another uh, uh, zone, but I'm intentionally saying I want to draw another zone. We are at an all time high. So when we are at an all time high like this, there's no supply zone that we can work from. But there is no supply zone. Uh, this one here, we're outside of it, right? So we tested it, we tried to break, nope, I'm not breaking, and boom, we're uh, up here in this zone, right? So there's, there's no supply zone, now it's just, where's the entry? Let's not have FOMO and enter a position here. If you had this position, whether you entered it here or here, fantastic. You can let the runners go. You've made your money. You've, you have your very, very tight stop from here. Your stop could be this gap. Uh, I don't mind it. Like once, once you've captured profit, you can make your stop as tight as you want. But at that point, it's about not giving back your gains. I, I don't want price to come back to my entry, right? I want very, very tight stop. Down here is actually not tight enough, right? So I, I, you know, I would prefer to have my stop, you know, right now somewhere here. This is where I prefer my stop. Because any gap down below here, I, I'm still in good profit. If I wait until here and it's a gap down below here, now I'm starting to get close to my entry. I don't like that, right? So that's that's what we want to see. Uh, as far as there, you know, uh, one thing I wanted to do is uh, we can take some of these. Uh, hold on, before I take this out, I think we're just good to talk about this. We have this uh, demand zone, and price in spies did not come down even to that twenty three point six. It was crazy on the spies extremely shallow pullback like we said hey lower high we could see all of this now it started to go down so depending on that entry this you know we could have wait waited but this didn't take place uh or we said price from here should up and goes down that didn't happen From here, actually, uh, because uh, let, let's go back to here. One thing we didn't draw on the spy is because uh, we had it in the queues. Same, it was the same scenario, right? Same scenario where uh, you wait for price to pull back and do one of these, uh, but that really didn't happen down here. It happened way up here. It happened here. It happened here. And it happened here. So spies were, for me, a little bit harder to uh, trade. Uh, that's why I kind of ignored them. Uh, why? A couple of things. One, we were in this uh, range bound. So this could have been a distribution. This could have been a, a reaccumulation. Not knowing which side it's on, uh, it's, it's hard to make a decision to the uh, upside. It, it's actually easier to make a decision to the downside, but price was consolidating here. Touch high, come down, touch up, come down, touch up, 
attempt to come down and boom off to the races so uh that's one thing about spies and uh, on cues uh, now that we have moved up higher this is our next fib level that's our next fib level uh that's where we um now prepare look how much room it has to go to come to this fib, right because it's there's no significant pullback right we didn't go below 38.2 to give us a new set of uh anchors right we still have our old anchor from way back here from october right it's actually exactly three months to the day now we've been going up three months straight like look at all these moves like recently cues they give us this big moves and then they also give us this big moves down so uh every time we make a high uh i say we can we should be a little bit more careful right we should just uh kind of wait and see and not chase it i don't like to chase it let's just be a little bit more cautious there uh and you know if you trade uh tqqq which is three times faster than the cues one of the things to keep in mind when you trade this uh, uh ultra etfs they're very highly leveraged their expense ratio is so high when cues went from all-time high down to back to all-time high to a new all-time high cues all-time high down halfway up right they've only recovered halfway because the expense ratio is eating it up so if somebody bought at 90 and did nothing they're still at a loss the way you kind of make that up is if you buy at 90 you you, you have to keep buying on the way down you have to keep buying even when it was at you know this uh 16 17 level you have to keep buying and and when it recovers we i'm like i'm always you know at this moment i'm u.s market bullish so when the market goes down I, I say it's temporary so you have to keep accumulating so that when it goes to 55 your cost average is so low you're still making decent amount of money but that's not why i wanted to come to uh this chart here I wanted to come to this chart because we have this uh, supply zone. Uh, we have this supply zone. Yes, it moves like the queues are moving, but I kind of like to uh, imagine things and uh, bring things together. Like the queues are pausing here at the 55 area because there's a supply zone here uh like for on the leveraged one so because i don't see it here because there's nothing for me to tell me where is the uh potential pause except for uh the negative 272 right if you look at the negative 272 from some recent moves but even that to me that's not a true negative 272 because we never had a chance to pull back so this has to keep moving so my negative 272 has, is running away from me, right? So it's very hard uh, to make a decision on a uh, on an area of value in the unknown. So to kind of mitigate that, I say, okay, on the leveraged, it has lost its money. So now where was a potential sign of trouble? So this is why uh i took uh i sold calls here at the 55 is because of this right uh now i don't sell naked calls but i have positions so if i if those positions get taken away that's fine but i i the, the reason why i sold the 55 calls is because i saw this 
right? And so if you're only trading the Qs and not the leveraged, you can assume, okay, this could this be an area of pause, right? So uh, supply zone is never a guarantee that it's pausing, but at least it says, hey, be on an alert, right? Could you, could you be wiped out of a good gain because you didn't uh, take care of this supply zone, right? That's just how I look at it. So take some, uh, you know, lighten up on your load if necessary, uh, or have very, very tight stops. Because what you don't want is you don't want this kind of collapse. Right? You don't want this fake bounces to eventually lead to a major, major collapse. That's, what, that's not what you want. So that's why I like to keep this in mind. And so therefore I say, could this be an area of pause? Could this now give us potentially, right now if we uh, say, where do we want to take an entry? I still want my green to green, right? I still want my green to green for our, our setup. There's nothing I'll give you to the upside because I don't have any sort of a pullback. The best I give you to the upside is uh, a shallower pullback. Right? That's the best I'll give you. And even that, you know, I would like to see uh, price close this gap and then use it, you know, as uh, as support. Like this is the best case scenario. Uh, same for spies, right? Because of where we are, same thing, right? Same thing. There's no difference. So if you if you want to play to the upside, you play it here. Uh, if you want to play to the upside but are patient to wait, you wait for green to green. So when I, just keep in mind when I draw green to green, I don't draw it up here, I don't draw it down here, I just draw it somewhere in the middle, that 50% line. But just keep in mind what I mean is anywhere in this green to green zone is where we want to enter. Uh, but uh, you can also enter to the downside. If you get a lower high and price keeps making stairs to your green to green uh let's see uh let's just use this right if you want to do this to the downside and wait for that green to green to happen wait for this line to happen then you can also take this right but if it's a straight line it's kind of hard <laughs> excuse me so that's, this, these are the three scenarios, right? Spies, Qs, same exact thing, right? Because we talk a lot about uh, Qs, I, I will draw that again here, down here, uh, right? If we st uh, stair step down here. So we have uh, one possible entry to the downside, two possible entries to the upside, and it's, it's a personal preference. Do you like shallow pullback? Do you like deeper pullback? As you're getting deeper pullback, do you want to take advantage of the uh, uh, bearish momentum? All right, so that's our analysis. I just want to ask any trades, any trades that we should look at. Um, I was just uh, managing the Apple trade um, from okay. last week um, since I was sick from the last previous week. week. Yeah, from the previous week. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Remind me, where was our entry? Um, the entry was, um, if you zoom in a little bit, um, it's at the hammer. Um, if you look at... Here? Um, yeah. January 24th? No, actually, that was... No. Well, actually, let me, let me pull January it up. January 17th, sorry, man. Let me pull it up. Um, I believe it was actually the 17th. We might be right. Um, no, we didn't meet last Tuesday, so it had to be prior to that. So. Before, yeah, there was, yeah, that was that week right there. Yeah. I think it's here. I think this was it. I now, now I, rem I think I remember. It was this trade. Yeah, it was right there. A little yes. bit of pain for uh, a few days. <laughs> uh, well, but you know, gain, 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 and then pain. 
for a few days, but if because you top you stop, you gave it some room, I'm assuming. I did, yeah. The stop was um set at actually uh one seventy eight. So it was right above at that point it was the right above the sixty one point eight. Um yeah. Right, right below the sixty-one point eight. Actually, this. Yeah. Is, okay. Right okay, it's good. Yeah. It's good. And then, I actually, um, didn't exit at all. Um, I kind of held at that position. Why? Um, and I uh, well didn't hit my stop loss, so I said I didn't raise my. I should say I didn't raise my stop. Um, because I thought it was just fairly shallow. Um, I didn't even get the one X, barely got the one X. So I said, let me kind of just keep my stop because uh, I saw it moving sideways. Um, I was waiting for a break to the upside. Um, it gapped down a few times and then it kept pushing back up, gapped down again, kept pushing back up. Um, I still it didn't hit my stop, so I didn't really feel like I um, needed to exit. Um, so I kind of just stuck to... Uh, my trading plan and on the gap up on the next day or on uh, Thursday um, yeah. I gap up after it gapped up went uh, shot up um, I didn't uh, um, it came back but it didn't even close the gap it didn't even get close to closing the gap it didn't even got back to the opening price point so I said okay I'm just gonna keep it and then um, so this is why this hold on so let me pause you so i understand you didn't you, not exiting here it, it's it's uh you know it's not where uh you expect it to be so i understand not exiting there uh, up here you're saying you didn't exit because you didn't hit your 2x um as soon as it gapped up i raised my um stop to um kind of the, the opening of the gap zone. And then I just monitored that that morning. I just kind of sat there for the first two hours and just kind of all day monitored the price action very closely. I okay, saw so it you, just your stop. Uh, I just want to go one by one. So your stop is somewhere here yes. or yeah. is here? No, no, it's uh, the middle of that gap. And then I was okay. kind of just usually just monitoring. Uh, so you're positive at this moment. You're positive, but uh, you, you didn't want to exit your trade. Yeah, uh, mainly okay. because of how strongly the gap up, because it was like a gap up and then a strong push the first two hours. Yeah, candle. yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, you and know what you I just said now is uh, what we talked about, the gap up play, right? Yeah. If it gaps right. up and it refuses to go to close that gap, it's a nice play. Exactly. Yeah, and then I saw it push down a little bit, but I saw it was pushing down on lower volume, so it yeah. gave me more conviction that I should just wait it out. Okay. Um, and then it pushed back up at the end of the day. Uh, at the end of the day, when it did that, I actually did raise my um, my stop to the open price, so just at the top of that gap. Um, yeah. Um, And then the next day, of course, we had just another green day. I just kept watching, watching, watching. So at two no X, work. I want just, to know why you don't exit at two X. Um, it was just, you know, the momentum was kind of in the favor. I it was a Friday morning, and I said Fridays is usually when I have an opportunity to very closely monitor the chats and the main or the the charts. And the main thing is. No candle closed before the previous candle. Every candle was just an extension candle as I was watching it throughout the day. If you look at the hourly, <laughs> first candle, move up, then sideways candle, then a move up, but then it doesn't close below the former candle. And so every day it was just a push up. And the, the whole market was like this, is including SPY. So I just saw market momentum. And so I just kept it, kept it, kept it. And then, like at the last couple, of, like when it started stalling towards the end of the day, that's when I closed my position and I said, "I'm not going to leave it over the weekend." So I, I closed out completely okay. at that point. Okay, I uh, I like I like your thinking, right? I th that that's why I kept asking, right? 
like normally for me at two x I would exit partial mm -hmm. position, not all position, partial position. Even no. if I could monitor it, like one, I don't like to monitor my charts for more than two minutes an hour. Right, I'm just yeah. glancing at it. Right, I don't like to do that. So, I want to take my two x uh, exit as quickly as I can. Right, and and then two. I start to play now with the stop, right? Every hour I start to play with the stop. That's that's where I like to stay because I'm at 2x. But for you, the way you traded it is fine. Uh, one advantage it would give you by uh, taking your exit, right? By being able to take your exit uh, at 2x is you can leave your trade open over the weekend. Mm -hmm. because the friday your stop is now here when friday closes even if it got down here you still even you, the remaining position is still more than 2x right mm -hmm. so it gives you yeah. that flexibility and say look 2x was here i take half position end of friday i take a quarter position whether it's 3x or not it doesn't matter I take quarter position off, mm -hmm. right? And yeah. because if you look at Friday, it actually 3.4, which is amazing, right? So, I mean, you, yours worked out great. You said you were able to monitor it. So I'm not, uh, please don't take this to mean that what you did is wrong. What you did is perfect, right? So I'm just saying how I personally look at it is at 2X, I take a good amount of positions off at 3X, and at end of Friday, I take another good amount of position off, right? And because this has given me a nice return, I can just say, look, I'm going to leave 25%. I'm okay. I can leave even, uh, you know, 10% if I want, if I, if I really want to take just a little bit. Uh, if I only want to leave a little bit on the table, I do it this way. So, but perfect. I, I like this trade. Um, you closed it, but you didn't take advantage of this gain. Mm -hmm. But but you closed most of your position, I mean all of your position at you know better than three X. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so this is definitely good. one of my uh, best trades so far in terms of just general uh, patience and execution and i think market momentum definitely helped um because there was just a nice rally um between the last week so yeah write that down in our journal mm. write it down to say hey uh you know why did i stay until 3x right because you know a year from now three months from now you're gonna forget why you stayed in this trade but if you mm. have it in your journal then you say okay when something similar happens i can take action mm. right and so yeah uh, this was a good trade congrats all right so no no other trades right no no other trades um for okay. the past yeah okay so we have our matching orders and uh so let's just call it good for today and we will reconvene next week all right all right thanks many